Uh, this is Todd Davis from Race Tech. ATV On Demand recently sent us a, a full set of shocks from a 450 MXR quad that we're going to do a complete conversion on. Uh, I kind of wanted to show you what went into building these shocks. I'm going to basically give you a demonstration on uh, a YFZ450R, but very similar as far as uh, what we're trying to accomplish on both ends. So let's go check it out. What we have is one of the more popular current models, ATVs. I think this thing will really go off here shortly is the uh, Yamaha YFZ450R. This is a stock component right here. Uh, basically, there's been kind of a, a progression on the ATV side of things as far as higher end components coming stock. Uh, some of the problems with the stock ATV stuff, typically they tend to be a, a little bit undersprung, over damped, things like that. It's all fixable. It's not like the, st the shock is junk or it can't be fixed. If you modify it in the right places, it can work. Uh, one of the things that we've tried to do, as opposed to focusing on, say, high-end components, something like this, you know, where you're going to drop $2,500, $3,000 on a set of shocks, which we can accommodate that. But what we want to be able to do is have a price point for everybody. So if you need just a spring or if you need just a seal, we've got something for you, you know, basically, and, and you can do this stuff in steps and stages if you're on a budget. If you want to just start with a front spring kit or a rear spring or what have you, you know, you can do all this stuff in steps and stages, which definitely helps. The first step that you're always going to take is you're going to look at spring rates first. Spring rates are going to be based off of body weight, uh, how much the quad weighs, whether you're going to, you know, plus two or plus one arms or minus two swing arms or what have you. You always need to tackle the spring rate problem first. Once you get that done, you're gonna you know you're gonna go after the, the internal damping to both suit the spring rates and the type of riding that you're doing. Uh, this is a, a spring kit here for the YFZ450. This will be a triple rate zero preload setup, which is what we call a race series. Race series doesn't really refer to whether or not you race or not. It's just uh, terminology, so we can separate the two. Race series being being a no preload setup and a sport series being a preloaded setup. It's basically external work where you won't have to disassemble the shocks. If you get into a gold valve kit, which is, this is something that we have right here, where it's an internal piston assembly, where you're getting valve body and all the necessary valving shims and stuff like that. This is gonna be a little bit more involved. This is gonna, this is gonna require disassembly of the shock. Now obviously, we, if these kits come with full instructions and a video and all that type of thing. Um, it's not the easiest thing in the world to do. It is something that you can do in your garage. It will require an investment in some tools and nitrogen tank and that type of thing. But if you take this to any reputable suspension shop, they can install that for you. Uh, at this point, we're ready to install the gold valve. Uh, what we would do at this point is obviously do our digital valving search, find out what settings we were going to put in, build our valve stacks, and we would drop them on at this point. Now, the biggest deal with the gold valve, what we're trying to accomplish, you can kind of see the, the different port designs here. This being stock and this being the gold valve. What we're trying to do is open up the port area. As you can see, they're much larger. We want increased oil flow, which basically takes, takes the question of port size out of our mind. Um, if you're restricted at the port, there's going to be a certain point in the travel. You've heard of mid-stroke harshness or whatever. What you can really call that is mid-speed harshness or high-speed harshness where the, the lack of, of flow area in the piston can create damping in of itself. What we're trying to accomplish is eliminate that so that we can take the full burden of the valving, of, of, the, of the setup and put it on the valve stack itself. Okay, so at this point, we'll assume that we've built our valve stacks and we'll use the stock ones, which will look completely different than what you're gonna build for comparison's sake, and then drop it back on the shaft. Okay. From there, make sure the piston is surfaced. Uh, surfacing pistons, something we do on a rebuild, on a new build, anytime I take a shock apart, I'll surface the piston. We'll use anything from like a 600 grit, you can use 240 for surfacing a piston. If you don't have a surface plate, a piece of glass works just fine. And from there, you can see the larger ports are the compression ports, and they're gonna go down, like so, and then, our rebound stack will go on. Okay, base plate will come on. And what you want is the base plate to be up above that step so that when you screw, when you turn the nut down, you're tightening everything together. Very important. The 
shaft nut torque typically on like a 12 millimeter nut, something like this is going to be 25 foot pounds. The smaller the size of the nut, the lower the torque. So you would torque that to 25 foot pounds and you're good. Now what you're basically looking for here is sealing surfaces from the shim stack to your ports and you'd hold it up to the light like so and you're basically looking for any kind of light that you can see through there. If you can see light, you got a piece of dirt or something stuck in there and you need to kind of take it apart and clean it. But at this point we'd be ready for assembly. So there you have it. Uh, the build process is a little complicated. There's a lot to it. Um, basically we can kind of wrap that up at this point and we'll send you back to the full bike build. Thanks.